Why not dispatch cars? Well, welcome, welcome guys. Welcome back to another live training. In today's live training, we will be talking about the auto industry or the auto transport. Many of you guys asked about, come on, let's do a video about the, uh, the training on um, central dispatch, um, the car hauling, auto transport. So in today's video, guys, we'll be talking about the load boards, the car haulers use, what are the advantages, disadvantages. And as always, we'll be going over the training. And at the end, we will have um, Q&A where you will be asking questions about the auto transport, tracking in general. So when we picked up this um, title for today's live training, and we have two people in mind. One is... Maybe you are, I would say person, first person is looking for, I would say, planning to go into trucking business more specifically, car hauling or auto transport industry or buying, you know, it's it's basically moving cars. That's maybe your interest. And, and second person it will be um, a person who is independent freight dispatcher looking to dispatch cars. And obviously there's a lot of advantages and a lot of benefits going into car hauling business and dispatch cars, basically meaning working for um, the auto transport company, being an independent freight dispatcher. And again, you can be in-house dispatcher. You can do that and work remotely. But what we do teach is that it's it's being an independent freight dispatcher. You can be any part of the world and get um, the carriers and dispatch their trucks. Well, a little bit of a backstory. I started with the car hauling business, so I'll just you know make it this a little bit bigger. My company name was because I don't do any more trucking. Um, so back in 20, um, 2014, this is when I started my auto transport. My first business was actually in the trucking business was auto transport. We moved about for about an year and a half we moved cars so basically i know ins and outs of i would say the car hauling business so the the company name was well the company is still um alive but we don't do trucking anymore the company name for the auto transport was the prime express and we based on um the atlanta georgia so this is our website you guys don't don't call because that phone number is not working anymore and um, so today we'll be talking about the load boards. Today we'll be talking about meaning the auto transport industry. What are the, the, the tools they use, meaning the TMS. I have one of the best. I called, um, you, you know, my friends who are in the car hauling industry. Um, they moving cars. And I said, you know, what are the tools you're using, the, the TMS, whatnot, so that you can, and again, having these two People in mind, people who are interested in going into trucking and start their car hauling business, and then obviously, second, you know, person is the people is the person who is looking for going into the car hauling as an independent freight dispatcher. So, obviously, guys, prepare your questions. Let me pull, and I do see um, you already um, posting. Please keep them coming. Let's focus on the you know, car hauling specifically. I know we have a lot of questions, but let's focus on, on auto transport today. So if you have any questions as for auto transport, and again, let me pull this even bigger and then I'll show you. Um, this is the website we built. This is a custom built website. It's basically you enter your location and the website does everything. It's automated. The lead comes, and again, lead is a person who's looking for, let's say, move. Um, the customer moves wanted to move the car from, let's say, from point A to point B. So what they do is that they will enter the um, the location, meaning the zip code and the shipping vehicle to where, for example, the destination. And then it will be asking questions about what's the model, what's the year, is it running, do you want open trailer, do you want closed trailer? So it will do everything till to the point where they will pay for the services up front, meaning they, they, there will be a deposit, $150, for example, and then we'll just receive the confirmation saying, hey, here is a customer, you know, want to ship a car 
from, let's say, Atlanta to Houston. So it's kind of hands off. This is custom built website. We also bought the domain recently about a couple months ago. When I was starting this company, primeexpress.com wasn't available. So recently, about a couple of week, a couple of months ago, we bought the domain name, which is primeexpress.com. Uh, so the domain wasn't available, and we just put. And this is a you know hack. So if you're taking notes, if you are starting a company and a company name it's not available, you just put LLC, right? So you put LLC at the end, and you can use it. And when the domain name is you know becomes available, obviously you can use it. And I, uh, you know, before I started this live training in one of the um, the group members asked me a question about, oh, well, they're like really um, nice cars are really, you are the really uh, moving those cars or did you like, is it the stock image or not? No, it's, it's actually um, the, um, what is it? Let me close this real quick. This is the... Um, the Facebook page we have for this, as you can see, um, this is uh, these are the cars we were picking up. These cars from um, Minheim, Atlanta, and these cars goes to go to the uh, uh, what is it dealership in Los Angeles, California. Okay, so the load boards. Let's talk about the load board. Obviously, load board for general freight is different the load board for this auto transport and guys many people will use different terms the thing about auto transport they will say um car hauling they will say shipping cars car shipping car shipment whatnot but it's it's exactly everything is the same thing basically so the number one load board that they use and there are other load boards out there but what i realized about 99 percent of the the car haulers they use this tool which is central dispatch i don't have access i can't just log in and show you how to use it but it's it's very straightforward you, and, and again it's similar to dat um, power load board is basically you say okay here's my truck located in atlanta georgia goes to los angeles for example or the Phoenix, Arizona, or Houston, Texas, and then available cars will, you know, pop up. They just, you need to kind of, my best advice is to just learn the mix and models. Um, that's all, right? So when I was starting out, I, well, I knew a couple of um, brands, I would say, out there, but not all of them. Sometimes when you're talking to a broker, broker would name a car that, like, well, what are you talking about? I don't know what, what do you mean? And then I will just Google it and say, okay, oh, wow, this is the car you're, you know, shipping. So this is very important. Um, this is the tool. And, I, and and again, they have the 30-day free trial. And again, I'm not affiliated with this company, but I use them in the past. So you can, if, if, if you know, if you're looking or maybe you're planning to start your car hauling business, this is the tool. This is the number one tool you will be using. So... What about this the, the CRM? What about the tools that they use? And again, I did the homework for you guys already. I called, as I said, my you know friends and friends and families who are in the car hauling business. So they use um, what we call this. Let me come back here. There you go. So the tool for this is Super Dispatch. And again, I'm not affiliated with this company whatsoever. It's just like this is the value. When I was in the car hauling business, I heard about them but i never used them but the people who use this they say really good things about this company this is an awesome company as they said and again i never tried do your diligence you know do more research maybe watch youtube videos but again if you are in the car hauling business and you're going to start your car hauling business these are the two tools that you'll you'll be using most of the time and I think the most important tool that you will be using in your business is your website. Guys, it's like I can't emphasize enough the importance of a website, specifically if it does the work for you. So it's it's a thing about this website that we, we, we custom built. This basically out there working 24-7, 365 bringing leads, meaning customers, about 60% of the customers that we get the order confirmation, we used to get, I would say, that they already paid. They made a deposit. And, and what you do is that you're basically your dispatcher receives, if you are a carrier, gets the 
uh, order confirmation and then says, hey, driver, for example, assigning to a driver saying, hey, we do have the um, shipment. So the, the customer's already paid. Go ahead and pick up the load. This is about 99%. It's automated. And the important tool, and again, you'll be using in the um, car hauling business is your website. So let me let me come back and let me do this real quick. So let, let me see if you guys have questions. And I do see questions already coming in. And keep them coming. Please let me know um, if you have like specific questions as far as car hauling goes. And I'll be going into details like talking about the advantages and disadvantages. If you are, if you if you're planning to, do, to be, become um, a carrier, specifically in the the auto transport, so you're going into the auto transport industry. One thing is that yes, there's a lot of money to be made. Be honest with you. Yes, um, think about drive-in um, market makes about twenty to twenty-five k, meaning twenty-five thousand, give or take, plus minus. Uh, and again, these are the num numbers that, you know, average, this is what I, you know, have seen and and I do see a lot. Drive-in, it's about like 20000 to 25000 gross revenue per month, right? Then think about the next, the biggest, I would say, market is, is the temperature controlled or the reefer market. And they make about thirty to 35K. <clears throat> excuse me, you know, give it a take. And again, these are the average numbers. But when you go to, let's say, flatbed step deck, it's about like 35. If you're really good at dispatching, you can go to, let's say, about 40K. And this is where the car, hauler, car haulers make about 40 to 45K, even a little bit more. Some, um, you know, companies I do know that they're making a lot of money in the, in the uh, auto transport. But that is an advantage if you are, you know, planning to go into this car hauling business. And again, numbers can change. Don't take and say, hey, I went to the, you know, I started my business because you said they're making about 45 to 50K. And again, this is for, you know, the 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 whole purpose of these videos are just for educational, you know, purposes and for entertainment purposes only. So, you know, think about now the disadvantages. When the disadvantages I can, you know, tell you from you know my personal experience that there are a lot of accidents a lot of accidents a lot of scratches um in in i think the driver issue is i think in the car hauling business it's even worse it's it's like it's really <clears throat> hard to get a driver for for your truck and why is that because there are a lot of labor involved meaning securing the um, you know, vehicles, it's it's really the equipment, it's it's like a high, not many people, they have the experience. I think it's, this is more of a like, you, if you're going into this business, you, you need to look for very, very experienced um, driver. And, and I do see people starting like, hey, I can, you know, hire a driver and I can, you know, teach them and I can show them whatnot. But again, this is where you see a lot of accidents happening. And then when you have a lot of accidents, what's happening your insurance premium goes up, right? And then you can't keep up with the business. And if you, if you don't have an insurance policy, that means you're out of business, specifically in, in the trans auto, auto transport um, industry or the business. So those are the disadvantages. And, and I think the biggest, um, second, I would say, biggest disadvantage is the equipment. It's, it's really hard to get it, specifically trailer. When I was starting out, I bought seven car um, trailer, which is Catrell. The brand name was Catrell. And we ordered, and I remember we waited about like seven months to get it. Now, even worse. I, 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 what I hear is that people waiting, I don't know, a year and a year and a half to get the trailer. So that is the basic trailer, which is seven cars, moving seven cars. But then you can haul about two cars, three cars, uh, maybe five cars. But I don't recommend this, but I do see people doing those as well. But if you really want to make money, if you're interested in becoming a carrier, then obviously I do recommend going into like big semi trucks. That's the base model, I would say. Now, when you move a little bit, you know, up in the ladder, what you see is this nine cars and then 10 cars um, in equipment. Those are really, really expensive. Last time I checked, I think it was about 300K. 
the, the, for the single, it's like the truck and trailer moving nine cars. It's it's ridiculous. It's very, very expensive. So think about you have, I don't know, um, three trucks and now you're almost a uh, million dollar in debt, for example. Obviously, you will be financing those cars. So those are the disadvantages. So the thing about now the second person, which is independent freight dispatchers. And again, coming back to these markets um, that we talked about, think about drive-in market. It's I think there are a lot of, to be honest with you, I think it's already saturated. There are a lot of people going into this. I think it's really easy to get in, um, both for independent freight dispatchers and carriers, because buying a you know truck is very easy and hiring a driver for driving is easy. Why? Because less labor involved, right? It's just like they're, they're driving, they're not doing anything compared to car haulers and compared to flatbed uh, or the step debt owners. So think about they make about 20, 25K per month as a gross revenue. And then think about whatever your charges, maybe it's weekly, maybe it's a percentage, it's, it's, it's up to you. But think about they're making about 20 to 25K per month as a gross revenue. And this is what you agreed and this is what you get, for example. So this is where you like make less money, but then you are kind of pushing on the quantity. The more trucks you dispatch, the more money you make. So moving up in the ladder and again, so we have the refrigerated or temp temperature controlled um, trailer, which is reefer market. When you go into specifically reefer market, obviously it's really the disadvantage. One, I think the biggest disadvantage is that what I see and what I hear is the appointment. So if you miss appointments, that's it. Load is yours. Go ahead and do whatever you want. And I've seen those cases. And if you are a carrier in, in, in the refrigerated market, you can comment and let me know. What are your experiences? Think about the flatbed. This is where I was specialized. I had four trucks. Obviously, I don't do tracking anymore. So we are right now. And, and again, I remember that the, we, we, we got an email uh, from one of our you know students saying, Kamal, you mentioned that you no longer um, in the tracking industry, meaning, no, I'm in the tracking industry, but I don't you know, haul anything. It's like more specifically, we we are focusing on teaching people and working on the software that we're developing for the transportation industry. So we sold out our trucks, trailers, no more trucking. So there is a big reason, and we did a uh, video you can you can watch in this channel. So the thing about coming back to this flatbed market and uh, the flatbed market and the step deck or slash step deck market. Um, Think about they make about as we said it's about thirty to thirty five thousand per month as a gross revenue and again as an independent freight dispatcher this is what you agree this is what you get and the car haulers they make forty five and up I mean forty to forty five and it's between I would say forty k and fifty k per month right and and because of that think about the equipment is it's enormous it's it's real it's ridiculously expensive so think about that the more money you pay for the equipment, obviously, you make more money, so to speak, right? But they really make really good money. And I do see a lot of, and I know the Chicago-based company, they're huge. They, I think, have about like 300, you know, trucks. And we have um, Dayton, Ohio. We have Atlanta, Georgia. A lot of, you know, car haulers. They're looking for independent freight dispatchers, be honest with you. There are a lot of opportunities to, to go there. And you can, you know obviously being an independent freight dispatcher and offer your services to these carriers. So I hope you guys find the value. Let me start taking some of your questions. And if, if, if you guys have those, let me see. Let me take this really. Um, Java here says, how can I start this business? Well, well, and again, if you are out of a business, I mean, out of, and again, if you're out of the country, it's it's one way. And then if you're in the States, and, and obviously this is how you create a business if you're in the States, and then I will um, go a little bit over about how you can create your business if you're outside the United States. Um, think about when you're starting out, it's, it's, and, and again, quick disclaimer, guys, when you're starting a business, okay, don't take my advice. Just do your, you know, your research, talk to professionals. So that you can get help, but this is my personal experience. Obviously, what I did, I 
you know, come up with the you know company name, um, and then form my LLC, meaning limited liability company. And this is how I started, basically, right? And then when you start a company, obviously it's not enough. Now you kind of structuring, you're planning. Like, okay, I'm in the car hauling business. Now the equipment is the biggest problem. Now you go out and just think about, okay, are you going to move five cars? Are you going to move seven cars? Are you going to move nine cars? Are you going to move 10 cars? So think about if you move less, you know, cars, obviously you're making more cars. Obviously uh, you're making more, but then the equipment becomes your number one problem. The second is a driver, thinking about the driver, hiring the driver, training the driver, for example, and then your marketing strategies. So when when you're planning to start your business, the down payments is huge for this business. They're really, really capital capital intensive business, and it's brutally competitive. Um, so if you like, okay, I know friends and families in this business, I want to go there. Think about it. A lot of money to be invested in this business. I would probably say about like 50k. Think about it that way. But if you like invest less, that's awesome. But their insurance, you know, premiums, down payments truck down payments, trailer down payments, huge. And again, think about the equipment. If you want to go to nine cars, think about it. It's about 300K, right? $300,000 is just like one equipment. It, it's it's in like, it's ridiculous. It's expensive. So think about that way. So if you're outside the US, obviously you're hiring what we call is the uh, registered agent. Registered agent is it's, it's, it's a company that they're doing... Um, I would say helping you start your business. Think about it. They are your right hand in the United States helping you start your business. So basically that would would be the US-based company. So this is how you start the business. And again, this is very, in general, this is you know practical, I would say, um, advice, but don't take my advice. Just, and again, do your diligence and talk to your um, small business attorneys how we can start the business. I hope it helps. Let me take this. Would you recommend for a new independent dispatcher to start with the auto transport market? You can do that. Absolutely. And one of my students, I remember um, when he was struggling to get a carrier and then he started uh, dispatching cars. Obviously, you can you can do that. So, um, yeah, you, you can do that. Absolutely. Um, let me see. Um, Anna says... Make a whole video about this um, in your training. We, um, since I don't have the access to a load board, this is one of the reasons why we don't teach inside our training. And again, if you're interested in becoming an independent freight dispatcher, guys, there will be a link below this video, but we don't teach car hauling. But a lot of students who are um, planning to dispatch, for example, cars, they will get my personal advice. Well, because I... I was there. I've been in this business. I know. Um, and then I do my best to help my students. But there's no videos inside of training showing you this is central dispatch. This is how you do it. We don't we don't we don't do that. We specifically um, focus on the general freight. So hope that makes sense. OK, let's take this one. Mahdi says if broker doesn't pay money to the factoring company. So what happened then? Um, will the factoring company solve this or should we get involved in taking the money from broker? Thanks. You're welcome. Absolutely. So, yes, if you're working with, with the factoring company, they obviously have different, um, I would say, plans that you can get from the factoring company. So I um, I can say, yes, factoring company will, will fight back to get the money, obviously, if the the broker refuses to pay and they file the bankruptcy, whatnot. And obviously the factoring company that paid money to you, then they will, you know, do the chargeback, get the money back because they couldn't get the money out of the um, broker. Then you can be involved in this. And again, I don't know the, like how much money it's like, I don't know. Is it thousand bucks? Is it like hundred thousand bucks? Is it 50,000 or whatever? But it depends on obviously the, the 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 money invested or the you you moved I don't know maybe for 10 20 thousand and he's refusing to pay um, this is where you can like take really legal actions but it's kind of less than 5k or something like that and they they gone be honest with you it's happened to me they gone they gone right it's like you kind of report as a loss for your business 
And this is a transportation industry and, and it's a trucking. Anything at any time can happen. Just like deal with it, be honest with you. So I don't want to just say, oh, no, you can do that and you can get paid. I, I don't want to just, um, y- y- you know, picture this. I don't know, the land where you're just making money without doing anything. No, trucking is brutally competitive, capital intensive business. Anything can happen. A lot of accidents. A lot of people don't pay. Sometimes carriers won't pay. It all depends on the system, how you set up your business, obviously, right? But you're not secured with this. Anything can happen. If the broker doesn't pay, well, there's less work to do, to be honest with you. If it's gone, it's gone already. There's no money um, to get from, from the broker. Well, that's unfortunate, but, you know, this is a business. Um, let's see. Let me get this. Um, do auto do auto dispatchers take bigger fee than regular ones? Um, what what I do see is the percentages all across the board. I think is same, but some people charge you know more. Some people charge less. And obviously, if you're just doing finding a load, booking a load, dispatching a load, you're charging less. And if you kind of packaged your services, and we talked a lot. In, in this channel about packaging your services and offering to your carriers, then this is where you make a lot of money with it. So think about your management company. Like the more you manage this trucking company, the more you get, obviously. So let me take this. Um, does the disadvantages you mentioned refer to the carrier or the disadvantages? I gone over the carrier disadvantages and advantages and also the, the uh, disadvantage for the dispatcher. And think about when I say carrier and dispatcher, they are the same in a sense, right? Why I say this is because when you contract, when you sign up with a carrier, you basically carrier gives you the limited power of attorney. Limited power of attorney is basically says that, hey, I'm giving you the limited of um, power to use my company. I'm not giving you the full control of my uh, company so that, you, so that you can dispatch, but it's just a limited, right? So now you have the rights to use this company and dispatch what that means. Now you kind of become, a, in a sense, you are a carrier. So if a carrier has a disadvantages, basically you have the disadvantages, right? Yes, you are secured when it comes to the, the insurance policy that your carrier has. And again, don't forget to list your company under his, um, the, the tracking company, the insurance policy. This is very important. And um, so that you can get covered. Anything happens, for example, any accidents or something like that. Um, yeah, and, and think about disadvantages again. Driver can leave the carrier. Now you can't dispatch. Accidents, insurance went up. Carriers can't keep up. It's gone. You can't dispatch. And think about the um, scratches, whatnot. There are a lot of accidents involved. But yes, you know the advantage and disadvantage for carriers and dispatchers almost identical. Um, let me see. Let's take this. I'm interested. Um, I'm your student, Kamal. Absolutely. So cool, guys. Well, this is you know I hope you guys taking you know notes and and getting the value out of this. And if you really wanted to kind of if you're thinking about or the planning, start your trucking company or become an independent freight dispatcher. There are links below. And again, guys, there 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 are links below. There are a lot of useful links below this video. So once I post, it will be available to you. There are load boards. Uh, free 30 day free trial you can use it play around and guys if you have any questions uh, let me see if you guys have no you don't so guys and again we do these twice a week every tuesday and fridays so get prepared for the friday training and once we get to friday we do have something amazing coming up and then we'll share it with you on the friday until then stay safe bye for now 